New for Mastercam 2019 is the Model Chamfer Toolpath. Model Chamfer is used to apply chamfers to a solid model. The difference between this and using the old school 2D contour and chamfering inside of that is that Model Chamfer has solid awareness in it, whereas it can recognize a solid edge or boss and when you're chamfering an edge it can avoid those bosses so you can chamfer as much of your model as possible without actually crashing into edges or bosses uh, etc. So to get started in this example here I'm just going to do a couple straightforward chamfers not worrying about avoiding anything so in this operation I'll start by clicking on my chain geometry Notice when I clicked the model chamfer option, it launched right into the parameters page. It didn't launch me into a geometry selection right away. So to start, we're gonna chain some geometry. Notice on my chaining, I only have options for solid chaining because this, again, this toolpath is only uh, useful with solid models. So there will be no use of wireframe geometry. So I'm in solid chaining. I'm just gonna grab a few, uh, we're gonna go for loops here. And we'll just grab things like this boss here. So other side of the pocket there. Basically clicking on all the edges of components that I do want to apply chamfers to. Okay, so there's a couple more edges we could pick, but I think that's enough for demonstration purposes. All of all the edges I want to chamfer for now are selected. Notice it has now grabbed the solid model that's associated with the geometry that I've chosen. With the model chamfer toolpath, we are only able to use chamfering tools. And I'm just going to grab my half inch chamfer here and use that one. So if I go back to the solid, uh, to the toolpath type page, there is values in here for side clearance. This side clearance is the side of your actual cutter, not the side of the model. I guess you could look at it. Uh, they're one and the same, I guess, when you're talking about clearances. Uh, but this does refer to the side clearance between the part and your tool. Um, and we'll look at this stuff in the next chamfering tool path. I just want to go a, through a straightforward chamfer uh, to get started here. So the model that I have here has no chamfers on it. Those are all sharp corners, so I have to type in my actual chamfer width here. I'm just going to use 50 thou because uh, this part's rather large. And just so they show up nicely, I'm going to put at a uh, fair fairly big size chamfer. We do have options to control the offset of the tool either from the bottom or from the top. So for a part like this that I've just selected that has no chamfers on the actual model, um, either or that you want to select is fine. And let's just say, yeah, 50 thou offset from the bottom is, uh, is good. So we're chamfering with the smaller portion of the tool, especially with areas like this. Uh, we'll be able to get into those smaller rads that way. Lead in, lead out is a little bit different than what you're used to seeing in your normal 2D contour operation. Uh, but you can still accomplish the exactly the same types of motions that you would need for tool paths like this. So here we can either lead in with an arc or we lead in perpendicular. Uh, most likely you want to go in on an arc so you get that smooth blend into your edge instead of the perpendicular which dives straight into material. But that, again, that's up to you and what it is you want on the outcome. Entering at midpoint, again, that's the same style of uh, lead-ins that were available previous. We do have a, an extra box down here that's a fitting distance. Uh, we'll go over that a little bit more in a second. Multipasses, depth cuts, again, are available. Linking parameters, notice we do not have top of stock or depths. Those are coming from the solid model and the parameters set here to define the chamfer but we are still able to define retracts, feed planes, and clearances. Other than that, all the rest of the parameters are similar to what you would see in other 2D operations. So we'll just click OK. And we now have some chamfering tool paths on our part. So we'll just launch this into a solid verifier quickly and have a look at the results. So nothing crazy here, exactly what you would expect from a chamfering operation and pretty much the same thing you would expect from even uh, chamfering with the 2D contour. So now where this toolpath actually is meant to function uh, better or to, to its best case use 
would be on a feature like this here. So I want to chamfer this edge around the inner circle here and back out. But if I was to, let me just make a new operation here. And I'm going to grab a new edge and I'm going to go linked edge this time. Okay. So with that geometry, if I was to cut all of that geometry, you could uh, pretty much tell right away that this corner of the solid is going to get uh, cut away and that's going to be an issue. So that's where the solid model side clearance uh, settings come in here. So I'm going to say a 50 thou clearance on the side of my, between the side of my tool and the actual model. And also in the lead in, lead out parameters, this fitting distance is what allows this lead in motion to still happen within a specified distance. Uh, so what's going to happen here with the side clearance is the tool path is going to get trimmed back or trimmed forward, I guess is the better way to look at this, so that the side of the tool is 50 thou away from this edge. What's going to happen then is if we are within 100 thou of the starting location, this lead in motion is still going to happen. If we start getting beyond this distance, what we're going to end up with is a straight plunge onto geometry and then the tool path will start. So most likely you're going to always want to have your lead in parameters working. So setting this to a higher value is probably preferred unless there's a reason why you would not want to lead in. So I'm going to click OK on that. Hit OK and rebuild the operation. This is a pretty big arc, so I could probably turn that down a little bit. But you can see how it's missing this first portion of the, uh, of the geometry in order to avoid the, uh, the side of the actual solid here. So I'm going to turn my solid edges on here. Hopefully my video card can deal with this simulation here. Okay, so notice it's trimmed away the portion of this uh, part of the chain in order to avoid this side of the model. And I think I can back up here and do a really slow playthrough. Uh, it's not really going to work that good, but we'll go back into the back plot and see. So anyways, we've, we've trimmed off this portion here in order to keep this tool 50 thou away from the actual body of the part. So in the back plot, you should be able to see this a little bit better. Turn the holder off, go back into a top view. And play this. And as it gets very close, you can see right about, I would say there, that distance from the corner of the model to the side of the cutter, that's going to be that 50 thou clearance that we've specified. So that's the main benefit of this new model chamfer toolpath, is the ability to chamfer edges like this and not void your solid. However, there are some other scenarios which you may come across when chamfering. And that would be as if uh, your model already has chamfers applied to it. And we will look into those in the next video.